In this recording, I'm going to start with a function f of t and assume that its Laplace transform is some known function, capital F of s. I'm then going to form an integral involving f of t as the integrand. I'll call this new function g of t, as follows. g is just the integral of f, starting at some base value, which I've allowed to be 0, and finishing at the top value t. Notice that I've written f of u du because the integration variable is a dummy variable. The dependence of g on t appears only in the upper limit of the integral. I'm going to show you a simple technique for finding the Laplace transform of g. In a separate recording, I've done this in a rather more complicated way. It's more complicated, but it is actually a very interesting application of the technique of reversing the order of double integrals. It's therefore worth knowing about as well, but what follows is the simple way. Let's call the Laplace transform of little g, capital G of S. G of S is an unknown, but capital F of S is known, so my task is to express capital G in terms of capital F, if possible. I've now marked my starting equation relating G and F with a star. I'm going to differentiate star with respect to t. The result before simplification is dg by dt on the left and on the right d by dt of the integral from 0 to t of f of u du. Differentiation and integration are inverse processes for each other and so the result on the right simply turns out to be f of t. That seems to conform to our knowledge of differentiation and integration. If f is dg dt then the integral of f is just g. Let's transfer that last equation without the middle part to the next page. I'm now going to take the Laplace transform of this equation. We've learned how to take the Laplace transform of the derivative of a function in another maths cast. The answer we get will be as follows. On the left hand side the Laplace transform of the derivative is s times capital G of s which we still don't know of course minus little g of 0. That's just following the rule for the derivative. On the right we just get capital F of s which we do know. Now what about that little g of 0? Can we do anything with that? Well let's just flick back a page for a moment and look at the definition of g again. Look at equation star and we're interested in g of 0 so we have to substitute t equals 0. That will make the integral from 0 to 0 of f of u du. Let's write that down. But this integral starts at 0 and finishes at 0, so it goes nowhere. It will have no contribution at all. The answer is simply 0. Well, that's made life a bit easier. We can now write s times capital G equals capital F. If we divide both sides by s, then we have the answer we're looking for. g of s equals f of s over s. Summarising, if we have a function f of t whose Laplace transform is known, capital F of s, then if we integrate f of t, that is effectively dividing the Laplace transform by a factor of s. Maybe that should come as no surprise since differentiating results in multiplication by s. Multiplication and division are inverse processes and integration and differentiation are also inverse processes. As I said before, this is the simplest derivation of this result, but it is worth looking at the other version that I've recorded, where we use double integrals and reverse the order, especially if you're studying a course where double integration is required.